Hello my friends, I finally have reached the point where um, where we met, met up with last semester. And so um, I was going to make a new video for 3.5, but I am so exhausted that I can't. So I'm going to use the video I used last time. I have the same, same stuff, but I did some, I mean I have the same note packet and whatnot. And I did some kind of crazy stuff, and I don't know if I did it in 3.5. Um, I will be watching it, but I don't have time right now to watch it, but I'm going to put this up and like stay in stuff like send me the code word and then maybe told you the code word was blue or something like that or um, bear or something. I don't know. Anyway, don't do that. You don't have to do that. And so um, that was before I knew that Canvas kept track of whether or not you watch the videos. So anyway, so that's kind of the story on um, that, but I did go through the stuff. So here it is, 3.5 curves, curves uh, sketching from last semester, but it's the same curve sketching as uh, here. Um, I, I might have also said stuff like hi to some of my students that I had known for eight weeks and then we went home uh, to be at home because of the COVID. And so if I did, um, I don't know, I'm saying hi to you guys too. And so anyway, so that's kind of the story there. So I'm going to have my son put this on so that they're all together. So that's my plan. Okay, my Math 6A friends. Um, I told you guys I would start with a video on 3.5, which I know that we did part of 3.5 in class. Um, but um, that will just get us started. I'm going to try to do two videos today, but we'll see. Um, so far, the stress is real around here. Um, okay, so uh, a summary of um, curve sketching. Um, we talked about that uh, a good thing to think about is the domain. They call it the A through G in your textbook, and the, um, that's where it's defined. B is the intercepts. Remember to find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0 and solve for x. Uh, and to find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0 and solve for y. Um, Symmetry, the test for even functions, uh, sym symmetric about the y-axis, is to test whether f of negative x equals f of x. Then you'll know it's an even function if that's true uh, for all x. And um, for odd functions, uh, that's uh, uh, origin symmetry, that f of negative x equals negative of f of x. Um, and then there's periodic functions, too, like sine and cosine and tangent. And um, those are... Um, uh, sym symmetric if, and this is your period, so for sine, the period's 2 pi, and tangent, the period's 2 pi. And so if f of x plus your period equals f of x, then you know it's a periodic function. Okay, then we spent some time looking at the asymptotes um, and how to find the asymptote. Um, you know that it has a uh, vertical asymptote uh, if you have a rational function, and what that means is it has a numerator and a denominator. So a lot of people are asking me, when do you know it's going to have a, um, a vertical asymptote? Well, it has to have a denominator. And, um, and so, and it's when that reduced fraction, uh, when that denominator is equal to zero. So reduced means it doesn't have any common factors with the numerator. Uh, then that's a, a vertical asymptote. And you can, you can test if your vertical asymptote is at A, whether or not it's going to infinity or negative infinity on, um, on the left side of A and on the right side of A. Is it going to positive infinity or negative infinity? And then the horizontal asymptote, we learned about the horizontal asymptote in the last section. And that horizontal asymptote is um, uh, when uh, you find the limit as x goes to negative infinity and as x goes to positive infinity. And, um, and on most functions, um, L is the same point, whatever that limit is. Uh, for polynomials, uh, it might be um, uh, different, uh, but on rational expressions, so I guess that's what I should say, is on rational expressions, um, oh, and you wouldn't have a horizontal asymptote on a polynomial, huh, duh. Anyway, on rational uh, functions, it would be the same. If you had a square root, though, in it, or absolute value in it, then we talked about you, that looking at negative infinity and positive infinity, you have to look at both. And then the slant asymptote we talked about uh, is if you don't have a horizontal asymptote, it's possible that you have a slant asymptote. Uh, and 
or an oblique asymptote. Slant means it's a line, uh, and oblique means it could be something other than a line, like a polynomial. And ours actually, in our book, are all lines. So I guess I'll just focus on that. And uh, what you do to find it is you use long division, and sometimes you can use synthetic division as well. Uh, if we have an example where we can do synthetic division, I'll try to remember how to do that. Um, you guys, without you guys to remind me, what will I do? Um, and so, uh, and then E and F is the things that the first derivative tells you. The first derivative tells you where there's possible local minimums, local maximums, absolute ma maximum, and absolute minimums. It also tells you where the function's increasing and decreasing. Now, remember how you find the absolute maximum on a graph is if it has endpoints, you test all of the critical points and the endpoints, and the highest one is the absolute max. And how you find the absolute min is you test all of the endpoints and the critical points, and the lowest one is the absolute um, min. Um, and then uh, the second derivative, the kind of things the second derivative tells you are whether it's concave up or concave down, um, and also some inflection points. So we've practiced these things out of context, and now they're going to have us kind of put the whole thing together. I moved over to the next page where I had this lovely graph. Um, and, um, and so on this, on this page uh, is uh, a graph that has um, uh, s of x equals 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. And they're uh, telling us that, hey, where the denominator is 0 is where the vertical asymptote is. I know that's hard to see on this uh, computer screen, but um, this is... Uh, x equals negative 2 is the vertical asymptote. Now it's important when you someone asks you the vertical asymptote that you don't say negative 2. You say x equals negative 2. It needs to be a vertical line. And then the horizontal asymptote, uh, how you would find it is you find the limit. Um, you find the limit as 3x plus 5 over x plus 2 goes to uh, plus or minus infinity. And I can do dominant term analysis here, and this is the same as the limit, as 3x, that's the dominant term in the numerator, over 1x, dominant term in the denominator. Um, and then the x's uh, would reduce out, so that's 3. And so the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 3. And so you see the horizontal asymptote there. Now one thing I mentioned in class is that it's possible for a graph to cross the horizontal asymptote at more than one spot, in fact, um, and so, uh, but you do not cross, the graph will not cross the vertical asymptote. Okay, and then this is a, a little example on something that has a, an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. They called it here on this picture I got off of the internet. They called it an oblique asymptote, but since it's a line, it is a slant asymptote, and, um, and the idea here that the asymptote, well, here's the vertical asymptote too. I didn't mention that too. That's where the denominator is zero. And, um, and so the idea here is what's happening as x goes to infinity. And as x goes to infinity, 1 over x minus 2, um, this is equation has been written in uh, after they've long divided it. Um, but that's going to zero at infinity because 1 over... Uh, x is a uh, dominant term analysis would be going to um, zero, right, as x goes to infinity. One over infinity is zero. And uh, so this part's going to zero, and this part's going to negative infinity. But I want to know how does it look as it goes to negative infinity and how it looks like. It looks like y equals negative x plus 4. So that's the equation of the slant asymptote. And as my graph as my x's get close to negative infinity, they're getting close to that line. And as my x's get po close to positive infinity, they're getting close to that line. Okay, so we're going to try one of those. And so we're on the next page there. And this is example uh, 48, 46 rather, sorry, 46 in your, um, in, from your textbook. And it's asking us to verify that the graph of the function does not have a horizontal asymptote. So that's the first thing that we're wanting to look at, is does it have a horizontal asymptote? And the answer is, they're saying it doesn't, and they want us to verify it. So if we looked at the limit 
of our function as x goes to plus or minus infinity. We have this function, 4x to the third minus 10x to the second minus 11x plus 1 over x squared minus 3x. If I'm trying to find that limit, I'm going to be doing dominant term analysis on that, and that's the biggest in the numerator, uh, and so that's the limit. I see I need more room here. Uh, uh, 4x to the third over x to the second. And when I reduce that, um, x to the third divided by x to the second, this is going to be the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of 4x. Do you guys agree? And so at infinity, this is going to infinity. At negative infinity, this is going to negative infinity. So this is equal to plus or minus infinity, and that's how we know it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. So if it had a horizontal asymptote, then it would have a, be going to like a number six or whatever have you. Okay, the next thing they asked us to do is to find the vertical asymptote. And, uh, and so I want to find the vertical asymptote. How you do that is, you make sure that your function here is reduced. And you can see that the numerator with four terms there would be difficult to, uh, to factor. But the denominator uh, factors as x times x minus 3. So, um, and I'm going to show you a way. Uh, so our denominator, x squared minus 3x, equals 0, right? And I'm going to show you a way to verify that it's reduced, equals 0. So this gives us x equals 0, that's one vertical asymptote, and x equals 3 is another possible vertical asymptote. Now how I know, and you guys probably all remember this, how I know that, that, um, that it didn't have a common factor of x with the numerator, well I can see that by inspection because the numerator doesn't have a common factor of x. And so, um, but I, if I plug in x is 0 in the numerator, and if I get 0, then I'll know, wait a minute, there was a common factor. But I don't, I get 1. And if I plug in 3, because now I'm asking you, well, is there a common factor of x minus 3, the x minus 3, would it have reduced out? Well, if you plug in 3, you should get 0 uh, if there is a common factor. And if you don't get 0, uh, then there wasn't a common factor. So when I plug in 3 there, I get negative 80, and I might have made a mistake and without, without my friends to help me and make sure that I'm okay, but I don't get 0, um, and so this is not a common factor, and so I know those are both vertical asymptotes. I can go over here on my gr graph and put the vertical asymptote. So at x equals 0, I know that the, the way the graph is that you can barely see that I'm drawing in the vertical asymptote. So x equals 0 was right there, and I think x equals 3 will be a little easier to see. So here's x equals 3. Now it's asking me to find the slant asymptote, and I can see the slant asymptote here. Can you guys see it right there? There it is going to be, right? So we're going to look for the equation of the slant asymptote. How you do it is by using long division. On this particular problem, you cannot um, you cannot use synthetic division because it has to your denominator has to look like x minus r, and I have x squared, so I, I I'm going to have to use long division to do this. So um, if you're having trouble with long division, um, uh, Andrea uh, can help you in uh, SI. And, uh, and he's going to have a session on Friday. And I can also help you with long division as soon as I figure out how to do the, um, the confer zoom. Um, that's my next goal. So videos are first, and confer zoom is my next goal. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys being patient. So I'm going to divide in here x squared minus 3x into 4x cubed minus 10x squared minus 11x plus 1. And um, you don't want to have any missing terms uh, here or here. And so you might be saying, hey, you have a missing term right there. And um, I'm going to agree with you, and I'm going to put plus 0. And so I'm going to back this up and put plus 0 there. Um, I could probably get away with that, out doing this, uh, but just to be extra careful. And so now I have x squared, x, and x to the 0, no x x cubed, x to the second, x, and no x. So I have the whole thing. And then what you do first 
is you divide your leaders. So right now, my leaders, so you're going to divide, D for divide, divide leaders. And uh, that's going to be 4x to the third. That's the leader. That's the lead of this polynomial. Um, that, that's my dividend. Divided by x to the second. So long story short, I get 4x. And then where I want to put that 4x at that I just got, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, you can put it anywhere up here. Uh, I prefer to line it up with the x's, though, um, because that helps me. So 4x is going to go right there. And, um, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to multiply. And what am I going to multiply? I'm going to multiply 4x times this trinomial. I turned it into a trinomial. And I'm going to lay out the pieces that I get. So 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. 4x times minus 3x is minus 12x squared. 4x times 0 is 0, and it doesn't matter if I put plus 0 or minus 0, so I'm just going to put my 0 there. And, uh, and now, the, so the process of doing the division is, can you see if I wrote it over here? No, I write it right here, is divide, multiply, we just did the multiply step, subtract is the next step. And that's where people lose it, is on subtract. Because what you're going to do is you're going to subtract this. And subtract has two steps. Subtract ha The two steps to subtract are distribute the negative and then, and, and then to essentially add, combine like terms, right? And so um, when I go, I'm going to see if I can be tricky with the purple pen. We'll see. I don't know if you can even see the pink pen. Um, and so... Um, I hope you can. I pray you can. So a negative times a positive is a negative. So I'm distributing. A negative times a, a, a negative is a positive. I'm distributing. A negative times um, a positive is a negative. And that's silly, I know, because it's on zero. And now I'm going to add. And uh, when you add, you just combine like terms. So 4x to the third minus 4x to the third is zero. If you didn't get zero on your leader there, then you have made a mistake. And then what you get is what you get. And so I'm going to have here uh, minus 10x squared plus 12x squared is 2x squared. And then negative 11x minus zero, you notice how that made it where it fit there, and uh, makes negative 11x. Zero is like terms with everyone. And then plus uh, one. And that plus one is going to be the next step. So subtract was really distribute the negative and then add. And then the next step is bring down. And so some people, my cousin told me this uh, when she was just a tiny little girl. She told me the div long division algorithm is daddy, mommy, sister, brother. And I was like, what? Um, and uh, But she's right. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And so we're going to bring down only the 1. So here comes the 1 down. And now we have nothing left to bring down. So we have one more time through the algorithm. Um, but uh, we, um, And so the, next, the first step, uh, you repeat on your algorithm. I don't know, can, are you seeing repeat? Repeat, and so you would do that division again with the leader. The new leader is um, 2x to the second. And you're dividing that by x to the second. And you get 2. So you put here plus 2, because it's positive, and, uh, and then you do the multiply again. I'm going to show you a shortcut, um, and so you guys are uh, you're going to be happy about that. So here um, I'm multiplying, so I'm going to get negative 6x, and I get plus 0, and I'm going to do the subtract step with my pink pen. Subtract, right? Distribute the negative, distribute the negative, and add. So the leader goes away, and if it doesn't, you've made a mistake. And I get negative 5x, uh, and then I get pl plus 1. So uh, my value, if have I got where I'm not writing where you can see it, I'm almost in. And that's one thing I have to watch myself on very carefully on this. And, um, and so um, anyway, so that means that y could be written like this. Uh, the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. 
So this right here is our quotient. So y equals 4x plus 2 plus our remainder. Here's our remainder. Negative 5x plus 1 over our divisor. And there's our divisor. x squared minus 3x. And what we're looking at is the limit of this as x goes to plus or minus infinity, right? So uh, to plus or minus infinity. Oh, I got where I wasn't seeing. You weren't seeing. Oh, 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 oh. I'll give myself the rest of the paper and not have that happen again because um, that could cause a cuss word. And um, this is a kid channel, so we don't talk that way. Um, okay, so at infinity, this part right here, dominant term analysis, negative 5x over x squared is negative 5 over x. And so negative 5 over x as I go to infinity is going to 0. As I go to negative infinity, it's going to 0. If you're like, what the heck? How do you know that? Go back and do the limits uh, that they had in, is it 3.4 where they had those limits? I think it is. Go back and do those limits. Um, and so, and this part right here is going to positive or negative infinity, depending on which one I'm going to, right? And so that right there is the slant asymptote. So do you friends see the shortcut that I was going to tell you about? Uh, do you guys see what I was going to say on shortcut? Is that I don't really care about the remainder because the remainder is going to be going to zero. So it is really just the quotient is my slant asymptote. And so I want to put that slant asymptote on my grid over here. And I notice that if I'm going to put that on my grid that, um, that I want to pick uh, some values so that we can kind of see it going on there. So if I pick, like, for example, if I pick uh, x is 10, I'm just looking at the, the grid there, and we did this in class, that's 42. All I need is two points to draw the line. Uh, I'm going to choose 5, and that's 22. 5 times. Okay, so I have to plot those points here uh, to draw it on there. Uh, so 10, 42. So 10, uh, 10, 20, 30, 42 is right there. And uh, 5, 22, 20, 2 is right there. And I'm not actually sure what side the 42 is of, on my thing. I'm gonna. It, it, it doesn't matter. It could be over it or it could be under it. If I, I could probably get another point. I, I think I'm guessing that it was probably a little over it. It's it's difficult because that's a a, a range of ten there. Um, but we're just putting it on here just so that we can kind of see where it's kind of going. Um, and so then I'm gonna draw my dotted line in here with my handy dandy ruler for my slant asymptote. And so you can kind of see that it's getting closer. It might cross in here and it might not. Um, there's a way of finding out if it crosses. Um, and um, how you find out if it crosses uh, I know that and now I'm not thinking, I'm blanking out on uh, oh, oh, where you can find out where it crosses um, on that. I'll have to come back on that because now I'm blanking out on um, how to do that. Uh, I know how to find out if crosses the horizontal asymptote. You set it equal to what your horizontal, you set this equal to what your horizontal asymptote is and solve it. I bet you set it equal to that and solve it to see if it crosses at any point. It certainly can. Yeah, that's what you do. Um, and and we're not we're not interested. We're, we don't care if it crosses or not at this moment. Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go on, and this is another problem that we had done in class, but we didn't do the whole thing. And Andrea finished it for me uh, in, um, uh, in, the, um, in your guys' SI. So uh, here we go, you guys ready? Um, and so um, this is problem 19 out of your textbook. Uh, we're gonna look at the domain. And the domain is where you can see that the numerator and the denominator on 19 aren't going to have any common factors. The domain is going to be you want to exclude any point that makes your denominator equal to zero. And, um, and so uh, uh, if you want just the real solutions of this, you can subtract one um, and take the cube root. 
which will be x equals negative 1. When I take the cube root of negative 1, I get negative 1. Um, if you want the other solutions to this, you could factor it using your cube formula, and two of those solutions are complex. So if you wanted to do that, you can. So the domain really is, um, is really x is not equal to negative 1, right? And, and you can write that real good and fancy. If you want, you can say, um, with set notation, you can say the domain d equals the set of x such that uh, x is an element of the real numbers and, and x is not equal to negative 1 if you wanted to get real good and fancy. Uh, but I have to admit that x, e x is not negative 1, uh, I would have been thrilled with. Okay, now the x-intercept is where you let y equals 0. So we let y equals 0. So this is going to be 0 equals x to the third over x to the third plus 1. When I solve this, I would uh, multiply both sides by x to the third plus 1. And when you multiply it by 0, you get 0 equals x to the third. And, um, and then that tells you that x equals uh, 0. So that gives us the ordered pair 0, 0 x is 0, y is 0, boink. And then the y-intercept, you let x equal 0, and you plug it in, y equals 0 cubed over 0 cubed plus 1. I had been careful with parentheses if that had been a negative, um, but it's not. So this is equal to 0, and I probably, this is a no-done moment, right? Um, probably should have known that. Uh, and um, but uh, I'm finding it right. And then the vertical asymptote is where your denominator is equal to zero, um, and so that's at x equals negative one. Then your horizontal asymptote, you look at the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of x to the third over x to the third plus one. And uh, dominant term analysis, this is the limit as we go to x. To infinity and negative infinity of x to the third over x to the third, which is the limit um, of 1. And remember, you can only use dominant term analysis uh, when you're going to um, plus or minus infinity, right? So you can't whip that out if your limit is going to 2 or something like that. So you need to be really careful and cautious about that. Um, and so my horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. That means it doesn't have a slant asymptote and so, uh, or an oblique asymptote. It either has a horizontal asymptote or a slant asymptote or an oblique asymptote. doesn't have both. Okay, now increasing, and, and I kind of made this like that on your paper, and I realized that was really silly the way I did that. Uh, but these are, I, I, maybe no space I should have had, maybe a comma in between, but these are the things that we're going to be finding. Um, here. And, and all of these things are found by using the first derivative. So if you look up above, I found the first derivative and I cleaned it up. And if you want to verify that that is the first derivative and clean it up yourself, more power to you. So the first derivative I found to make uh, the time a little shorter here, but you can go and find this first derivative using the quotient rule. And, and so um, so we're going to look at when the first derivative is equal to 0. And that's when the numerator is 0. So that's 3x squared equals 0. So that's when x is equal to 0. And I can see that this is multiplicity 2. Uh, and that means that when I go to do my sign table, it's not going to alternate on 0 because the multiplicity is even. Um, and sometimes that's helpful to know. Uh, and then I want to know where it's, um, where it's undefined. And it's undefined, um, the first derivative is undefined at x equals negative 1, um, which uh, looking at the denominator, remember, x to the third plus 1 raised to the second. And when I solve that, take the square root of both sides, you get x to the third plus 1. And then you've got your, um, uh, you know, solving down uh, to get to that, you can get to the, the same thing we had, and x is equal to negative 1. Um, and so, uh, and that's not in the domain. And in fact, um, we already know that x equals negative 1 uh, is a uh, vertical asymptote, right? So I like to make a note to myself on that. Then the next thing I do is I do a, a number line. 
You don't have to do a number line. I notice that your book uh, doesn't always do a number line. They kind of put things in a table and I'm okay with that too. And the book uses the sign chart and I'm okay with that too. Uh, and this is in the first derivative. Um, I'm pretty lazy and so I usually use my calculator and all I care about is whether or not it's positive or negative when I put it in. So I like to test points, like I would test x equals negative 2. So this is my test. And all I want to know is, is f prime positive or negative? So if I put in negative 2, well, the numerator will be positive uh, because you're squaring it. If I put in negative 2 there, um, then that would be um, whatever I get, but then I square it. And so um, do you guys agree that's positive, right? <laughs> because uh, it's positive divided by a positive. And so this is positive, so that we know that it's increasing. It's going up. And, um, and then we could uh, look at the rest of them. Now, you probably noticed, um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you guys notice that because I'm squaring um, x squared and I'm squaring um, the uh, x to the third plus 1 that's being squared, that no matter what you put in, what you put in there, negative or positive, you're going to get positive. And no matter what you have inside here, x to the third plus 1, when you square it, you're going to get positive. So would you guys agree with me that, hey, this is always positive, and so I'm wanting to check each one of these regions, and maybe I don't have to get so careful going and checking all of them, noticing that they're all positive. And so um, anyway, so that's kind of my, my thought on... Um, on um, on that and um, I was looking um, because when, when I looked, oh, I was looking at the wrong problem. It was saying that it was decreasing someplace. And I'm thinking, well, what, have, what thought have I got going wrong when I just told you that it, it's, it looks like it's always increasing because of the, the signs? And what I've got wrong is looking at the wrong problem in the back of the book. And I bet that's happened to you as well. So they asked us where it's increasing. And it's increasing from um, negative infinity to negative 1, and also from negative 1, I told you your book uses a comma, to 0, and also from 0 to infinity. And decreasing, they wanted me to say that too, and it's not decreasing. And so if I had a line, an underline for you to put, you know, increasing and decreasing, so it seemed like, you know, it's a good idea just to say not or never or whatever have you, just so that people know that you just didn't not answer the question. Now I'm looking for local extrema, the local max or the local min. Well, the local max and the local min is where it changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. But you notice it's increasing always, and so there are no local extreme values. And um, your book says extrema, uh, and so I'll follow on. So there's no local extreme values. There's no local extrema. Uh, and, um, and so we did a lovely, lovely job on that. It was cool. It was wonderful. Now, in order to find where it's concave up and concave down, you have to use information regarding the, um, the second derivative. So I gave you the second derivative, and you can verify that the second derivative is 6x times 1 minus 2x to the third, uh, if you like, and uh, using the quotient rule and also the chain rule. And so that would really give you some good practice with your derivative. So I didn't find this derivative here, um, but you will need to find derivatives on the, um, on the test. And so um, if you're having trouble finding this derivative, you can look in the solution manual. They show you how to find the derivative. Um, and also, um, if you're, uh, you could reach out to me, send me an email 
um, that you don't know how to find this derivative and maybe I'll make a video on it. Uh, but I thought it was one that everyone probably could find. Uh, but that's okay if you can't. So let, let um, but you could verify those. And so uh, we're looking where the, the second derivative is equal to zero. Uh, so that's at 6x equals zero and one minus two x to the third equals zero. So this gives us x equals zero. And, um, and then when I solve that, uh, negative two x to the third equals negative one divided by negative two. So I get x to the third equals half and uh, I'm almost out of room and that's going to be x equals the cube root of half um, and which is uh, the same as the cube root of um, cube root of one is one over the cube root of two. And, um, and so those are our, um, those are, and then it's never undefined um, except for uh, at negative one, which is not in the, right? So x double prime undefined is at x equals negative one again, which is not in the domain. But I do want it for my picture here. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a, um, uh, my same little line graph. It helps me uh, and I'm going to be testing the second derivative and I'm going to have on there um, uh, 0 and um, the cube root of 2, uh, cube 1 over the cube root of 2. So 0 is right here on my number line and the cube root 1 over the cube root of 2 is right there on my number line. It's positive. Boy, that wasn't really all that great. Okay, and um, and then negative one is over here. And none of these things, um, uh, uh, I would have three solutions to this if I solved it, and two of them by I could use factoring. I'd have to get pretty tricky with my factoring, but I could use factoring, and two of them would be complex, and the, and then one is real. And so really. Um, of my solutions, this is multiplicity one. This is multiplicity one because I would have three solutions. I just don't want the complex solutions um, there. And and then this might be a tricky multiplicity for me, right? Because I have the cube root and then I have a cube on there and whatnot. Um, I think it's odd though, and I don't think it's gonna. Um, I don't think it's gonna alternate. But we can test a few things just to make sure. So when I test negative two, so this is me testing now in my second derivative, x equals negative two, I'm gonna put that in there and all I care about is the sign. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I've, gotten, uh, I've gotten weary and so I'm, I'm sticking it into my calculator and the calculator will tell me more than the sign, which is very kind of it, uh, but I'll be able to edit that and, um, and that's, my, that's my rationale for taking the time right now to put it in there. And so let's see here, um, and and then I can test all of these points raised to the third here, uh, plus one, and raised to the third. So I got a positive for this. So this is positive over here, which means it's concave up. And then I'm going to test something in between negative uh, 1 and uh, 0. So negative half will be what I'll test, x equals negative half. And I'm going to see what it is. And so all I have to do is uh, go along here and um, uh, edit where I have the negative 2. And so I am doing that. And I got a negative. And so that means it's concave down here. And um, testing something between zero and the cube root of, um, of two, uh, one over the cube root of two. And I'm like, oh my, I, I, didn't, I wish I would have figured out what the cube root of two is approximately equal to on my calculator. Um, and so, uh, but uh, it, it ought to alternate. So I'm gonna just go for it. Well, I don't even know what I tested in between there, uh, but it's going to be positive. And then I'm going to 
test something way bigger than one over the cube root of two. So testing one would be a good thing to, to test. And so when I put in one, and um, then I'll, because um, we know that one will definitely be bigger there. And then if I'm not getting a negative, then I'll know that, hey, you need to be more careful, girly girl. And, uh, and I will then be more careful. So I am putting in a one and I got negative. And so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of confident on my analysis that it's going to alternate. So this is concave up. This is concave down. And, um, and so they wanted to know where is it concave up. And that is from negative infinity to negative 1. Am I on the screen and I'm writing? Yeah. Comma. And also from 0 to uh, 1 over the cube root of 2. A lovely point. And then concave down. Uh, it, it's going to be from negative 1 to 0. Uh, and also, we're going to have concave down from 1 over the cube root of 2 to infinity. And then where are our inflection points? And I abbreviate inflection point to IP. Um, well, all three, uh, all three of those things are not inflection points because remember that this was not in the domain. It was an asymptote. So it's not a, it's not a point. And so uh, we're going to have our inflection points at 0 and at 1 over the cube root of 2. So we're going to put in here, because we need to write them as an ordered pair, so when x is 0, now y is what we're going to be looking for. y is 0 cubed over 0 cubed plus 1. So we're not putting this back in the first derivative or the second derivative. We, it's a point, we want to know what its y value is. So we're going back to the original function. So this is at 0, which I think we knew that. So that's 0, 0 is an inflection point. Am I off the screen? I'm not, I'm still okay. And then the other um, inflection point is at x equals 1 over the cube root of 2. We're putting that in that same function. Um, and so uh, when you raise it to the third, uh, you're getting 1 half over one half plus one. And, um, and I certainly probably could do that math in my head. Uh, and normally I probably would do that math in my head, but oh man, I'm so nervous on the YouTube. And so I'm getting one third. So I'm gonna have one over the cube root of two comma one third. So it really wasn't uh, that mean of a, a, a point. Okay. And I'm probably way at the, um, uh, we did so much work on that. Okay, lovely. And then um, they ask us to draw it. And um, right now, uh, uh, I'm not really asking you to sketch them. Uh, my goal is that you can find all of the things on, on the graph. So here is a graph that I get, got by Desmos. And so um, you notice that it's increasing here. I'm going to put that asymptote on there. Where was that asymptote at again? Oh yeah, x equals negative 1, right? So there's the asymptote went right on there. And um, remember we had a horizontal asymptote and that was at y equals uh, 1 if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, and so here's the horizontal asymptote. y equals 1. Um, and then we had, so it's increasing here, and it's increasing here, and we had no extrema. There was no uh, absolute min or, uh, excuse me, local min or local max. There's actually not absolute min or absolute max either. Um, and then uh, they also, uh, we wanted to know about our inflection points. So we have one inflection point here at 0, 0, and then we had another inflection point at um, 1 over the cube root of 2, um, which is around 0.8. And so our other inflection point, and then right up at 1 -third. So somewhere in this range right here is another inflection point. 
And you can kind of see that it's concave down here and then it goes concave up there and then it changes and is concave down there. And, um, and so anyway, so we kind of, there, there, we looked at that, we did a lovely job on it. Okay, my, uh, my video, it'll break off wherever it wants and make a new file. Um, that's how it is. And so uh, I haven't learned how to, um, how to make that happen or not have that happen. I'm, I'm on my learning curve, so I'm learning some new things as well. Oh, I'm glad. That's the end of section 3.5. And uh, so, uh, my lovely friends, I hope you enjoy this video, and I will um, be getting another video for you soon.